fellow readers, welcome to The Star is the Book. Vulgar, obscene, lewd, morally objectionable, brutal, and to top it all off, written by a madman who threw plates at award ceremonies. So, with such high praise, of course, I had to read it and I found it truly original voice. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I'll hail a Zimbabwean hellraiser, Dambuzu Marechera, who wrote this fine book, The House of Hunger. So, Dambuzu Marechera was a rambunctious, alcoholic, disturbed, and savagely original hobo and writer. And The House of Hunger is the equivalent to his life. It all starts with this cool sentence. I got my things and left. But left for what? Where to? Can we ever leave behind the thing that torments us? the most and can soon to be liberated Zimbabwe that um, Dambuzu writes about in this book will ever be more than the flaws of its colonizer. It was the House of Hunger that first made me discontent with things. Of course, how could he not yet to share the house with the likes of mom, dad, his older brother Peter, and his sister-in-law Immaculate. You'll get a sense of how the vibe was back there at home. With this description on page 95 of Dad, I knew my father only as a character who occasionally screw mother and who pay the rent, beat me up and was cuckolded on the sly by various persons. And then there's mom. On page 19, her face was long and haggard, scarred by the many sacrifices she had taken on our behalf. Then his sweet older brother Peter. Peter walked about raging and spoiling for a fight, which just was not there. And because he hungered for the fight, everyone saw it in his eyes and liked him for it. And then there's the narrator himself, who was slapped by his mother every time he addresses her in English, a language he academically excels in. The narrator is also constantly harassed by his older brother Peter. Listen to this exchange between the two of them and their mother. All you did was starve yourself to send this shit to school, while Smith, Peter is referring to Ian Smith, the white leader of Rhodesian apartheid, made sure that the kind of education he got was exactly what has made him like this. To make matters more, complica more complicated, then there's Immaculate, Peter's wife, who the narrator has the hearts for. Listen to this description of Immaculate on page 23. It was not possible that a being like her could have been conceived in the grim squalor of our history. She made me want to dream, made me believe in visions, in hope. But the rock and grit of the earth denied this. Overall, you can imagine why he left. But a mind is never completely reborn as of spontaneous origin, especially a mind that's been subject to trauma that can never really find any solid ground to stand on again. The House of Hunger had become my mind. And I didn't like the way the roof was rattling. The same shakiness is valid for countries of traumatic birth, as the narrator recounts his personal experiences with apartheid. Leaving House of Hunger is then, at essence, hopeless. So hopeless that we never really see any prosaic details or concrete timeline of events following his departure from House of Hunger. The story of his Personal struggle for independence is interspersed with uh, beatings, school memories, several nervous breakdowns, all this sordid raw material that's supposed to help his rebirth along with the birth of the nation Zimbabwe. But the thing, of course, is contaminated right from the start, as it is stated here on page 92. 92. We were horse, eaten to the core by the syphilis of the white man's coming. And to me, that's the main moral lesson of the book. Even when all impediments are removed, most times, we're just not destined to be ourselves. Your guts will go through a great ride with this one. And I can imagine why some people would consider it obscene. First, 
because let's face it in our comfy societies we can only dabble episodically with the fringes the idea that the fringes are in some place to somebody around the world the mainstream are indeed the modus vivendi to some people is just too unsettling for us and then i really have a personal issue with the people who review books based on whether or not they were an insult to their personal beliefs or whether or not the reading experience was uncomforting well let me tell you writing is the most strenuous effort at trying to build empathy with someone even if it is a supposed reader even if it is a fictional self and empathy is a rational construction nothing like the viscera driven sympathy of our time and era and reading and writing should not be forced to become a popularity contest so that's a wrap hope you kind folks enjoy hope to see you again for the next review and happy holidays